Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to a new YouTube series called Learn the Mern Stack. And if you don't know what the Mern Stack is, it stands for MongoDB, Express, React, and Node.js. And MongoDB is a NoSQL database that stores our data. Express is a backend framework that's used mostly for building APIs. Uh, React is a front-end UI library slash framework. And then Node.js is a JavaScript runtime, which basically allows us to use JavaScript as a server-side technology or server-side language. And then putting all these, these technologies together allows us to build really powerful applications. It's also a very popular stack right now. If you can build MERN applications and deploy them, there's a, a really good chance that you can get a really good job, um, as well as build you know, your own great applications. Now, in this series, we'll be building something that's very simple on the surface. You, as you can see, it's a shopping list app. We can list items, add items, delete items. Um, you know, have a little modal pop up where we can add an item. So it's pretty simple on the surface, but behind the scenes, there's a lot going on. We're going to build our our API with Express, with Node and Express, along with Mongoose, which will connect to our MongoDB database, and we'll be using MLab for that. You can also use a local deployment if you want. Um, the code won't be any different. You'll just have a different Mongo URI to connect to. All right, so you can use a local MongoDB database if you want. Um, so we'll be building this. We'll also be using a couple other things on top of the MERN stack. So one is React Strap, which is a really cool module that allows us to basically import bootstrap components and use them kind of as React components with properties and so on. So it's a really cool way to implement bootstrap in React. We're also going to be using React Transition Group, which will allow us to have this little fade effect. If I go ahead and delete, you'll see it just takes a second. It fades away. Same thing if I add something, it fades in. So we'll be using that, which is pretty easy to implement. Um, we'll also be doing a full deployment. As you can see, this is live right now on Heroku. So I'll show you how to use the Heroku CLI, how to use Git to push the application to, to make it live. Um, so there's a lot that's going to go into this this series, even though this application is very simple. Um, one thing you'll notice it doesn't have is authentication. And I left that out because I wanted to I didn't want to make this series too long for now. But, you know, if it does well and you guys like it, it gets a lot of views and you guys want me to, um, then I can add authentication to it, probably using JSON Web Tokens. Uh, but I do have a Udemy course called Mern Stack Front to Back, where we build a small social network. And it's a 16 hour course. We use these same technologies. We use JWT. Um, I show you how to protect your back end routes and all that stuff. So uh, if you get through this and you want to learn more and go more in depth, I would suggest that course. I'll put a $10 link in the description. Um, but that's what we'll be building, guys. So I usually don't like to do like an intro video to my series. I like to just get started. But I wanted to kind of explain, you know, the technologies we'll be using, what we'll be what we'll be building and stuff like that. I also just wanted to take a really quick look at the code just so you can see kind of a preview of what we'll be doing. So this is the application here. I have it open in Sublime, but we'll be using VS Code for the course or for the series. Uh, but this is the back end. So the entire React application front end is in the client folder and then on the back end we have our server js where we bring in express mongoose um, we connect to mongoose all of the endpoints are going to be in this file here this routes api items file down here we just have a little block of code for when it's in production we want it to look at the client slash build folder which is you know when we have a react app and we do npm run build everything goes into that folder and we want to basically look at that index html file when we're in production because we don't have that dev server when we deploy to production um, which is a really big part of learning the mern stack is how to actually deploy it so uh, that's the server JS file. If we look in routes API items.js, we have three endpoints. One is to fetch the items, one is to create them, one is to delete them. We're bringing in our model right here, which is very simple. So this is the model. We have an item schema with just basically a name, which is a string, and then a date, which will be the current date will be put in by default. So very simple model, simple schema. Um, and then in the config, we just have our Mongo URI, which if you're using your local installation will be different than this. It will be your local host. 
All right, so that's basically the gist of the back end. Um, the client, which is the React component, is where we'll be spending most of our time. So we have a couple different components here. We have the app nav bar, which is pretty simple. We're using React Strap. We construct it with all this React Strap stuff. So this nav bar, nav bar brand, and so on. It even has its own little state if the if the hamburger menu is open or not. So we'll implement that. Um, then we have our item modal. And this is where we actually connect to Redux. So we're bringing in connect from the React Redux package. We have an add item action um, down here. You can see we're constructing the modal with React Strap. We submit it. Okay, it goes to on submit, and then we fire off that add item action, which is in our actions file. And then our shopping list component just gets the items. Okay, once again, we have an action for that, and and we're going to use um, What is it? React Strap to create a list group with list group items. Or you notice that we're also using this transition group in the CSS transition. That's how we're going to get that little fade effect. Okay, so that's that. Uh, I'm not going to go too in depth with this stuff. This is the actions file. So this is where we make all all the requests to the back end. Um, we have our reducer. So this is the item reducer. And we bring in all of our types, get items, add item, delete item, and then items loading, which you can see in our state, we have a loading value, which will be false. And right before we make our request, it'll be turned to true. And then once we get the response from the request, it'll be turned back to false. Okay, and you can see that right here. So that's pretty much it as far as, you know, just the gist of what we'll be building. Um, as you can see, it's it's quite a bit for the simple application, but that's the point. It's to get you to see how everything works together so that you can build your own bigger and better applications. So I really hope you guys enjoy this series. I would highly su suggest that you code along with me and actually deploy it along with me. I think you'll get more out of it than just watching it. Um, but again, you know, that's totally up to you. So thanks, guys. I appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.